Welcome back to another North Carolina Tar Heels football podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you are watching us on our extremely fast-growing YouTube channel, that is called Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is staff writer Brandon P. We're here for part two of our nine-part series looking at Carolina's position groups as we gear ourselves toward the start of the 2022 season. Tar Heels kick off August 27th at home against Florida A&M. Fall camp is basically concluded Sunday evening. The 14th is the last practice of fall camp. Classes start the next day, Monday the 15th, and then they get into a little bit of a more normalized schedule. So, Brandon, we already talked about the secondary we're here to talk about the linebackers, and we're going to kind of throw a little hook here. We're going to discuss the Jacks in this podcast and also the defensive line podcast because there are ele- linebacker elements to the position we'll hit on here. There are defensive line elements to the position we'll hit on in that podcast. But the first thing we got to discuss, obviously, is inside linebacker Brandon Power Eccles, Cedric Gray. Cedric Gray didn't start till the third game last year, ended up leading the Tar Heels and tackles with 100. He is a leader of this team. He's a spokesman of the team. He totally gets it. Very cerebral player like Jeremiah Gimmel was. Very athletic. He's a sideline to sideline guy. So before we discuss power, get your thoughts on Cedric Gray. Yeah, Cedric Gray was a guy that really surprised me last season. Uh, he played over 600 snaps and uh, – he, he led the team in tackles. He, his uh, missed tackle percentage on PFF was a little higher than he would probably like it. But one thing that he did excel at in last year was coverage. He only allowed like a 40, I, I believe it was a 46 per, uh, 46 passer rating for the opposing quarterback whenever he was targeted in coverage, if that makes sense, what I just said. Yeah, so it he, does. Okay. <laughs> so, it he, does. so he uh, so he showed a, he showed a real nap for covering. And uh, the, I'll go ahead and mention Power Echoes. I think the the cool thing about those two together is when you look at Power Echoes numbers, he, it's kind of the opposite. He only had two missed tackles on the season, but he allowed a 92.4 passer rating in coverage. So those two kind of like fit perfectly together. And if they can both improve, they 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 complement each other very well is what I'm trying to say. And they both can yeah. improve on those areas. They'll be a dynamic duo. Like they really say, small we, sample size though with power. Yeah, so um I, and he was and he was thrust into action against Wake Forest when Jeremiah Gimmel got uh, ejected for targeting. And then in, in the bowl game, Jeremiah tried to go, but he he wasn't feeling well. He was sick and he couldn't really play. So he was semi threat. He was more prepared pre-game that he was gonna get a lot of snaps that day. Uh staying on Cedric, the missed tackle thing I think is interesting because uh, I have a piece running here soon about searching for inches on defense. And I think it's probably Cedric Gray more than anybody else who's affected by this. And I actually asked him after practice on Wednesday about searching for inches. Basically what it is, it's it's something Gene Chiswick harps on for these guys. They got to find more inches. Finding more inches means that when you hit a guy, if you hit a guy coming at you like this, you have a much better chance of bringing them down. If you hit them going like that, I'm sorry, I'm beating the hell out of my uh, microphone here. If you hit them going like that on the side, they can sort of slide off and keep going and it can be considered a missed tackle. Those inches are the difference between where you make contact, where your point of contact with the ball carrier is, and then how it's appropriately graded. The, the thing here is this, and this goes back to the simplification of the defense, which we discussed about why we think the secondary should be better. Here, there were so many times last year, especially at linebacker, where they were not ready in, when the ball was snapped because Jeremiah and Cedric were trying so hard to get everybody lined up. They were getting multiple play calls. They had to make a decision on which one to use during that quick little period when everyone is going 19 seconds in between snaps, basically, uh, when, when, uh, in, during the pre-snap period. And a lot of the times when the ball snapped, they broke late. And they didn't really react. They had to They had to think and then react. Now, if you're not really thinking, you're just reacting because you know what you're doing. There is no hesitance when the ball is snapped. There is no indecision. You know what you're in at all times. Suddenly, you pick up some of those inches. And I think Cedric Gray, as much as anybody on defense, is going to benefit from this. He had the missed tackles. He had 100, and he didn't start the first two games, didn't play a lot. We could be looking at 115 tackles this year from him. And I think that he will benefit from searching for inches more than anybody else. 
I completely agree. I remember being in the press box with you and the uh, Cedric Gray and Jeremiah Gilmore are looking at the sideline and the ball is literally in the quarterback's hands. And it's like, well, it's hard to, uh, it's, it's, it's surprising that his uh, missed tackle percentage was just like not higher, but you know, he did a really good job. He's a long linebacker that I think that's what they really needed last season with him when they brought him in. I think that that really made a difference. Just hit, just that big body in the middle of the defense. I think that really made a real big de- difference for their defense last season. And it, I think the the results were clear when he was on the field. Yeah, well, I think it's a great point about him being long, Brandon. The interception against Miami. Yeah, because yeah, a long guy gets that interception, and, and, and you know, and he did used to run and pass catch passes in high school as well. So um, he's a really good athlete. Like I said at the outset, he's a sideline to sideline guy, and you need sideline to sideline guys in that part of the defense because they chase down everything. There isn't an area in the field in which the ball, the carrier, ball carrier comes down that you won't see a liner. You should always see a linebacker. Unless it's what you know, like a blitz sack or, or it's a it's a, a jailbreak or something like that, a terrible block by the offensive tackle, and Javari Ritzy gets in there real quickly and brings him down. Otherwise, there's if there's time elapsed, you're going to see you should see a linebacker near the ball, and Cedric Gray is is the perfect kind of guy because he is so athletic. Uh, Power Eccles, we talked to him last Saturday after the scrimmage over in the uh, football center. And I really, really enjoyed the interview. I love seeing kids change. And you could see how they talk to us, what the change is. A lot of times it's confidence. A lot of times it's a little bit more been there, done that. And he's getting that now. Last year, eh, it's kind of cool talking to the media now. Like he knows what he's going to say. He's spot on with what he says. There's no hesitance with, with the things that he says. When he's asked questions, very direct responses. And it's important because he's that guy. He only had like 164 snaps, I think it was, last year on defense. That's not a lot. And now he's plugged in there as a must-be-on-the-field-all-the-time guy. But he's carrying himself like he's been there around for a couple of years. And I like that in him because if you talk to teammates about power – they all say he's a beast. They all say he hits like a truck. They all say that he's old school because he says he's old school and in the physical aspect of the sport. And they all say he's really smart and athletic, like he's playing great football in, in fall camp. I'm really interested on the defensive side of the ball to see what power Eccles becomes this year as much as anybody else. I agree. This summer, this spring and summer, you know, I've been going around with Dina doing the whole the, on the recruiting trail with Dina. And every time I get an opportunity to talk to a high school, literally not every time, not every time I, being hyperbolic again. Many times when I talk to hi, high school coaches and I do tell, oh, yeah, I work for Tar Heel Illustrated. They always mention Power Eccles is the best linebacker I've ever faced. And like while I'm I've heard that multiple times that Power Eccles was the best high school linebacker that the coaches ever faced. So if he can live up to that hype on the in the college level, obviously he hasn't have had an opportunity to do so yet. But there's a reason he slotted in in that in the first spot of the depth chart with no competition as a red shirt or well, as a second year player, red shirt freshman, whatever you want to call him. Like he's gonna be, a, he. I think he's gonna be a really good player, sophomore. and I think he's gonna be. A, say it again. Sophomore. Oh yeah. Second okay. year. Sophomore. Second year guy. Yeah. Okay. Because we, yeah, these days I get confused sometimes too because of the COVID thing. Because the North, and this is for fans that are watching. If you look at the official roster, generally speaking, as long as kids were there in the COVID year, they they wait until they play their 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 elig- their eligibility out before they have the chance to decide whether or not to use that yeah. that COVID year. I, I talked to Drew Little, a long snapper the other day. This is his fourth year. He's played a lot all four years, but he could use that COVID year and come back, but he hasn't decided yet. So they just list him as the year he would be if there was no COVID year. So sometimes when we say sophomores or second-year guys, I just know when they came in, that's how I try to remember them. Yeah, but okay, well, back to power um... – yeah, but just hearing so much high praise from these different coaches on the high school level, I'm really excited to see what he could possibly develop into this season. I really think he can be an all ACC type guy. You know, um, I, I don't know if you were there on last Saturday, but I, I don't know if you saw the interview that we did with Power. But he he called himself an old school guy. He says 1970s Raiders, and he even threw out Autumn Wind 
Now, if you don't know what autumn wind is, look it up. When when this podcast is over, Google autumn wind and the Raiders and it's old NFL film stuff. It's awesome. And that's a guy I think who's been playing middle linebacker at a big time level in his mind since he was like six years old. Said he would, mm. my, his dad would put on NFL films and they'd uh, on TV and he'd sit there and have it on. He said he would just sit there and watch. And he loved the Raiders. His dad would talk about how physical they were, how nasty they were. You know, guys missing teeth, snot coming out of their nose, blood everywhere. He even mentioned neck rolls. I mean, how many kids did he know about neck rolls, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They- and, and I love that about him because this is a guy that eats, sleeps, breathes football. He does it at a cerebral level at an incredibly physical level. He's going to make mistakes because he doesn't have a ton of experience, but he's a guy that I think we're going to see really improve a ton as the year goes on. I think Carolina's in really good shape at middle at inside linebacker, provided those guys stay healthy. And even if they don't, I believe a guy like Sebastian Cheeks can really step in and like get get the get his footing pretty quickly. And I think he's going to be a really good one too, Sebastian Cheeks. Yeah, but he's a true freshman. And and Cedric told us the other day that he's he's been struggling with some of the mental stuff because there is so much to learn at that position. And this is the thing that fans need to understand about true freshmen. And Cedric laid it out there. So look, and actually Des Evans said something about it too on Wednesday. That in high school, you just find a ball, go get the ball, and that's it. Because you're so much better than everybody else, right? And college becomes far more cerebral. There's a lot of mental stuff. And not just on the field, just learning how to be a college football player. All the things that go into it, the time, the commitment, that sometimes you have to do stuff that maybe you don't really want to do because it's part of the quote unquote job. Right. And Sebastian is in the process of doing that. Now he enrolled early back in January. He lost his father in the spring, um, which, which is very sad. And that, that obviously affected him and affected it bounced some of the process, but I agree with you. I think that he's a kid that they love. They love the potential. I don't think that they want to see him playing 70 snaps against Notre Dame right now. And and I'm not sure that they have anybody that they feel comfortable with that could step in for Cedric or for power. And that's the problem with the room. The problem is that you've got Cheeks there, you've got Ra Ra, and they love Ra Ra, and Cedric was smiling and trying to be as restrained as he could about Ra Ra's role. I think that they have some special things in there for Ra Ra. Quite frankly, I think Ra Ra could play star. He could play free safety. He could play strong safety. But they have him as a linebacker. He's listed at 200 pounds. I, I, I'm, I just don't see 200 pounds. It's hard to see 200-pound guys taking on the physicality, the physical role that Eccles or Gray are going to have to deal with in there. So it's going to be interesting to see how they use him. And the other guy in the room is Deuce Caldwell, who just showed up this summer. Uh, he's big. Now, he looks the part. He looks like he's been in school for a while, but he just showed up. And if Cheeks is still dealing with the the mental curve, and he's been there since January, obviously Caldwell is too. I don't think we're going to see Caldwell get on the field other than maybe Florida A&M and a little bit on special teams. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that that inside role is pretty solid. Um, I, in years past, they've never they never really substitute that role. So if those two guys can stay healthy, I think the Tar Heels will be solid at that position. I don't if. think. Yeah, it's always an if, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's well, like, but that's the thing. But that's part of why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. Now, if they're healthy, they're fine at line, inside linebacker, and they're going to get better because even. Even with Cedric, he's got one year of experience. This will be year two. There's still a lot of things he's skipping on. You you mentioned the missed tackles. That wasn't just because of searching not of not getting the inches that he'll get this year. He still needs to wrap up better. I mean, they have been very open throughout camp about we need to tackle better. It, when when they hit guys, we need when we hit guys, we need to tackle better. That's what they're telling us. So it's not just the inches. It's it's the it's the the fundam, fundamentals of tackling and that was an issue for him as well Ra Ra, he is so intriguing uh, dina love covering his recruitment because a he's an amazing personality everybody swears by Ra Ra being like he, he Ra Ra walks into a room and oh yeah Ra Ra's here doesn't take a whole lot to know that he's there but he's also a magnificent athlete and he's a football player but finding where he fits on this defense especially 
you know, being in that inside linebacker room, I'm really intrigued to see how they use them. But also I think it's a legitimate concern for Carolina fans that if suddenly he has to get 75 reps a game inside linebacker, what does that look like? That guy's 200 pounds, super athletic, super bouncy, really good football player. But that's a lot for a guy his size if if he is thrust into something like that. Yeah, I agree. I I, I agree with you. I think uh, putting him at the star position might be his best uh, position ultimately. I think he can play on the inside. It's kind of concerning because when you yeah when you're only 200 pounds and the run is coming right at you, it's going to be hard for it's going to be hard to stop. So I, yeah, shedding so blockers. You played yeah. football. Shedding blockers. Yeah, it, it's because it's hard to like when you're in that when you're in that box, your speed is less effective. Like when you're in that little eight yard box, it's, your speed is a little less effective. Okay, let's shift over to the linebacker element of the jack position. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still learning. It's pretty funny because one of us in the media always asks, we ask Gene, what, what is Jack? We ask Chris Collins, what is Jack? We ask what, Noah what? Taylor, what is Jack? <laughs> and I think I have a decent idea, but of course, until I see the application of it on the field, then it, it'll still be a little suspect in my mind because even at practice, we haven't seen any 11 on 11 and full pads in practice. So I haven't seen it fully played out, but here's the understanding of what the Jack is. And we're also going to talk about this on the defensive line pod. Their job is to set the edge. So the Jack's job is to set the edge and they, they are also pass rushers. So, and they cover. So the, the, the linebacker element kind of comes in as what you say, an old traditional outside linebacker. That's thank LT, right? Got to set the edge a little bit, you know. You got to you got to protect that area. You sort of have to establish some kind of DNA on that side over there. But also the pass coverage element, which is something that they do not like the hybrid. It's not going to be as extensive as the hybrid. They're going to be, I think, a little bit more D, athletic D end, upright D end, different than the hybrid. Hybrid seemed like it was more a linebacker. So we saw 265-pound Dez Evans and Tamon Fox as an outside linebacker, and I think that there were issues with that, and Dez certainly will has spoken openly about that. Here you have Noah Taylor, who played a lot of linebacker at Virginia. He played strong safety at Virginia, did all kinds of stuff. you got Chris Collins, who arrived as a defensive end. His first snap he ever took was with a hand on the ground against East Carolina back in 2018 as a defensive end, and he wasn't ready for it. Now he's playing the jack position, and it has, and it fits his skill set. So the uh, the jack element of linebacker, being that third linebacker, being that outside linebacker, how that player can complement what uh, what the inside linebackers do. How do you see that sort of playing out from a linebacker perspective? Yeah. So the um, before we we like you said, we've been asking Gene Chizik and multiple players what the jack position exactly is and from my understanding from when everybody else explained it it was just another defensive end but when Noah Taylor explained it the other day he said there will be some coverage responsibilities like he said the the corners sometimes the corners when they bail out if the corners just bail out and nobody's there to protect underneath that's just an easy seven yards every single time so there will be there will be elements of them going out into the flats and covering that up when the when the corners bail out because like you said you can't just press man the entire game also set like you said setting the edge in the run game it's that's the linebacker element of it but i do believe 90 percent of it will be trying to get after the quarterback i also think Uh, yeah go ahead i also think and this is just me thinking out loud here probably shouldn't even say this but if something did happen inside linebacker I think a guy like Taylor could play there. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, th- yeah. I think Taylor's a football player. For sure. I've gone back and watched a lot of his stuff at UVA, and that dude's a football player. And he's so smart that he, he could probably learn a game plan in a half hour, 20 minutes. You know, he's just a really smart guy. He's got – he's big enough. He's athletic enough. He's rangy enough. He's lateral enough. He's physical enough. He's smart enough. I think that if they ever came into a desperate situation, he's a dude that could step in there. I'm just throwing that out there. That's how much I think about his game. I think Carolina fans are going to fall in love with Noah Taylor by the end of September. Uh, I think he's going to be someone everybody talks about by the end of September. I think he has found a perfect spot for himself. 
He made a really wise decision coming to Carolina, and he did it when Jay Bateman was still there, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, And talk about fortuitous. Suddenly, Gene Shizik's his defensive coordinator, and he's playing a position even more suited. He's not going to be playing five different spots like he did at UVA. He's the jacket, of course, unless craziness plays out like I just alluded to. I, I more said that not to project, but more to give people an idea of, of what he is as a player and how highly I think of him. Yeah, and you said he played all over the place. And in his press conference the other day, he said he had seven and a half sacks a couple of years ago playing in different positions. So I'm interested yeah. to see what he could, what he could produce playing a position where he rushes the passer 90, 95% of the time too. Yeah, he's going to be going at the pass, and we'll hit on that in the Defensive Line podcast, which we're going to record soon and run soon as well. That is it for linebacker. Uh, Not a ton of mystery. We kind of know what that room's all about, and gauging the progress of Sebastian Cheeks and how these rah-rah deal were, to me, are the things I'm really looking forward to seeing as well. For Brandon P., this is AJ. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you.